okay, I came from a, 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 fam a traditional family whereby um, 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 music wasn't um, was a non thing lah. So, but uh, uh, at that time, uh, certain events uh, as a as a as a kid, right? Uh, when I was growing up, right, happened in my family, uh, um, uh, and that uh, my father passed away. Uh, uh, my, I mean, we weren't so well to do so. Uh, um, bought really cheap stuff like Casio tones and all that, and just whatever that I can lay my hand on that can that can uh, make sounds, uh, <laughs> make some musical sounds, make some sense uh, of uh, what I need to say. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was listening to, 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 to Joy Division and I was like, yeah, okay, oh, this note, then look at the keyboard, oh, it's the same note, ah, oh, then figure out, oh. uh, so, so, so it's, a, it's a methodical kind of like system of uh, figuring out how things are being done and played, uh, so along the way just teach myself and learn uh, along the way and, 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 and at that time there weren't an, anybody to, to, to teach us and uh, there's no internet you can't go to YouTube to, to learn but um, you figure out uh, along the way you figure out through trial and experimentation uh, yeah and it helps that uh, we had I had two tape recorders at that time two uh, tape cassette uh, uh, player so I'll use them to loop one to play back one to record and then after that, I'll switch the tapes around, then I'll add more layers to it. Well, Joy Division, um, uh, orchestral maneuvers and the uh, new wave stuff, uh, new order, and uh, big influence locally was the only band back then which was uh, around that was playing original uh, alternative rock music was uh, Zircon Lounge. Uh, um, the first time I saw Chris uh, was when he had the band called Transformers. Uh, that was on some New Year's Eve countdown show on Channel 5. And when I first time I saw the band, I was like, what the? Wow, this is cool beyond cool, you know. Wow, so cool, so... so um, Blase, so enigmatic, so wonderful, you know? and, 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 and I say, wow, who is this guy, you know? what's the name of this band, and after that, there's nothing much about it, there's no, like I say, there's no internet, um, there's no magazines, nobody writes about them, radio doesn't play their music, so it took me a couple of years later, like one or two years later before um, uh, Zircon Lounge came about, there were some write-ups in the press, and then I realized, yeah, well, then, yeah, Zircon Lounge, yeah, then I started follow, following Chris, Zircon Lounge, yeah. I think 1984, uh, me and my uh, best friend from school, Fu Yu, uh, we decided to, like, hey, let's do something, uh, have fun, uh. and uh, I, he also had two <laughs> set tape, <laughs> tape decks. So that helps. I have two cassette tape decks at home. He has also at home. So and and, and it helps us that um, he lives across the road. So every time on um, Saturdays, whatever, we'll go. I'll go over to his place, or he'll come over to my place. Then we hang out. Then we we we'll just meddle around with our Casio tones and our um, pots and pans, whatever that makes. So, sounds uh, then I'll be writing uh, uh, lyrics and uh, he'll be coming out with ideas and uh, we'll be laying stuff like that uh, in the 80, 84 I think end of 84 we're just jarring screaming keyboards that was pumped through the amps and, and of course uh, we weren't well received uh, people were like what <laughs> what is this man what is this rubbish but we soldier on uh, it's like, but of course, uh, we were very affected. Uh, me and for you are uh, after the gig, both of us were, were very shaken. Uh. But after after that, right? There was a immediately after that, right? A um, couple of months later, we had a gig at uh, Marine Parade Library. At the end of the year, yeah, we had a gig there, and then at that time, I was like, you know, hack it, be brave, 
do not let your audience affect you. Go up, do your shit. Then subsequently, after after that, right? Um, uh, I think by that time, Fook Yu was uh, on and off, lah. I think he he joined the Air Force, uh, 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 and uh, he was on and off. Most of the time, he wasn't around. So I was doing gigs on my own with my Kasho tone and everything, and then I was uh, playing a lot of with um, Dang Da Wu whenever he's doing uh, his performance. Then I'll be supporting music, Lee Wen, uh, and and se- several uh, installation performance artists. Uh. So I'll be playing my stuff, and at the time, uh, yeah, I was doing a lot more. And people will. I mean, if you if, if you don't show, you don't let on that you are intimidated, right? You know, whatever. Just just do it, and people after a while they will just walk away and walk away, or they will just accept me. The the the, the sounds that was coming out from my casual tone. Yeah. I think that was a one shot thing whereby. Uh, I think for you, for you was too busy at at work, um, and was away. And I wanted to do something, and I feel I felt a little bit a little bit bad um, using Copper Toy without him around. So I I I guess that was the reason I cannot remember. And I decided to let's have another um, name for the band, uh, and I, for this one off fun thing. Uh, and 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 I think around the time I went on a trip to uh, to Malaysia backpack, uh, and I was. On in Kuantan and all that, so I was at Charating Beach. So coming back from Charating Beach, right, to back to Kuan, uh, Kuantan, uh, I managed to hear a cab, uh, and the cab came along. And then the cab, cab number was a C one three five nine. So I hopped into the cab, and along the way, I was picking up people, and dropping people off. It's like it's, like, it's almost like shuttle bus now. It's like from one place because from Charating to Kuantan, I think uh, I believe it was about one hour. So it was picking up people and dropping people off. So there was Machit, there was some um, sc- school school boys, uh, there was some German backpacker, whatever you know. And I thought, wow, this is such a a a a, 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 a wonderful journey. Uh, well, it's it's a vehicle whereby different people that you never met before. No, come and go. It's like passage of life kind of thing, uh, you know that kind of like thing. Uh. So I decided, no, oh, let's have this fun thing as a just call it, name it after that 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 taxi license plate, uh, C U one three five nine. Yeah, I was trying to write uh, uh, uh so more melodic songs. So I was trying to like having more melodic melodies and playing with uh, 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 different ideas, and I thought that. The electronic thing was doesn't help in the th- the things that I wanted to say or, or or how I want to present the song. So, and I was like um, wanting to come out with like more organic kind of like a rock traditional, more traditional rock band kind of setup. <coughs> That's when I decided to. Yeah, let's try it because oh, I I, th- I think I I I think I rem- remember. I mean, radio station, the song, it was it started off as an electronic piece. Then after that, I was fooling around with it, and I said, "It's takana, eh? just not happening, eh? I mean, it, need, it needs it needs that yeah, it needs that whatever. It needs that, uh, just doesn't cut it. So after that, yeah, just try it." Uh. Then after that, uh, I was friends with uh, uh, guys from uh, No Names, Patrick. Then I said, "Hey, um, you know, I got a couple songs. Want to jam, jam with me?" You know? They said, "Okay, lah." Yeah. Then they came together with Patrick. Uh, uh, then yeah, we just did a couple of gigs, record a couple of stuff for uh, New School Rock too. For a band to record something, right? You record a full length album or five songs or maybe just one two songs right you have to go to a studio anything uh, that uh, you, you you in the 80s right any studios in the 80s right it is 120 dollars 150 dollars 80 dollars okay 
1980 dollars okay go in there you pay 180 dollars 150 dollars per hour to record your songs that is a lot of money then came the late 80s right four track recording came and one of the first person who bought a four track recorder was a boy mr kk wong from tnt studio he started off in 89 or 88 as a two-room jam studio and then and then he decided hey all these bands are uh, all got hard you know, but cannot record album wow all students no money maybe i should invest in a four-track recorder so he converted his two rooms right into into one jam slash recording room and then the outside right he made himself like a console then he put a his four track recorder now there then he made it very affordable like 25 dollars or 20 dollars an hour and that was pivotal 1990 he did that or 89 he did that because one a band can play because there's substation two not only play right okay people who likes the band that they saw at substation they have the cassette to buy to bring back where did the cassette come from who came from the recording at TNT so all these things were yeah they 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 they, 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 they this 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 uh, 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 symbiotic growth uh, at, at the same pace happening at the same time and slowly 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 happened and by the mid 90s right there was digital recording already yeah late 90s there was a very expensive software but it was available you can buy it and then the cost of recording just keeps going down people can experiment at home they can record their drums in a studio because at home in hdb you cannot record drums police will come <laughs> of course police will come so usually they will record their drums in the studio proper studio then they go back home then they lay their guitar their bass at home they can take their own sweet time without no, uh, 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 um, adding cost to to recording time, and that was very important. Technology, uh, venues opening up of more venues. Technology being more affordable for kids to record stuff. Yeah.